what every person wants is to be seen, heard, and understood. The estranged adult child's perspective. Parents aren't the ultimate authorities about what happened in my childhood. Telling children that you can demand whatever you want because you made sacrifices for us will always backfire. Having time with your grandchild is a privilege, not a right. Unless your therapist has met me, the diagnosis you have been given of me may be completely wrong. It's wrong to not empathize with my wish that you could have raised me differently. Threatening to cut me out of your will does not make me want to reconcile. Just because you did a better job raising me than your parents did raising you doesn't mean that you didn't hurt me. This is the view of your adult children. Adult children in our society today are really working on themselves. It is so empowering to see the youth of our United States to really embrace themselves. Truly, it is. And they are finding themselves. Many physicians, many psychologists, LPCs, different people are recommending to disassociate from the parents that raised the children because thousands of reasons they suggested to take some time and distance yourself from the people that raised you. Why? Why, you say, us adults, our baby boomers, or what happened to our kids? These millennials, these youth, these adult children are finding and discovering themselves. They are going their own way. They're doing just what we taught them to do. In the 90s, we wanted to empower our youth, our children, and give them everything possible. Uh, and we said, do whatever you want to do. Be whoever you want to be. Be your authentic, true self. And what we found is in so doing that, and then also divorce. In the United States, divorce is rampant. When the family divides, the children go with the mother or the father, the every other week, the whatever it is. There's a separation. There's an anxiety. There is estrangement there between the parents. And then, unfortunately, you start to have control, resistance. You start to bring in all the emotions and everything. It is just a... Mm. And so the youth are suggested to step back, step away, and really work on themselves. And this talk is to help my peeps, my people. I'm 62, a baby boomer. And we're going, what happened? We did the best we could, yada, yada, whatever the story is that's happening in your life. I have found so much information and research and I want to share it with you. I will go back with Dr. Josh Coleman and then instead of what it is the adult child thinks, I'm going to show you what the baby boomer parent thinks. So sit back and listen to their side of it. All from Dr. Coleman. Chapter 12. The Adult Child's Perspective New Rules for Parent-Adult-Child Reconciliation The Estranged Parent's Perspective Adult children are not the ultimate authorities about what happened in their childhoods. Just because you check a few boxes on a survey doesn't mean your parent is a narcissist. Actually, you do owe your parents. Estranging an involved grandparent who never abused your child is child abuse and elder abuse. Unless your therapist has met your parent, their diagnosis of them may be completely incorrect. If your spouse requires that you estrange your otherwise good parents and you go along with it, you have a shitty marriage. 
It's absurd to blame your parent for not using parenting standards that didn't exist when they were raising you. Hurting your feelings is not the same as abusing you. The estranged adult child's perspective. The estranged adult child's perspective we listened to at the beginning of this video and now we're going to listen to it again and this is so opposite this is one end of the spectrum to another let's just embrace it and listen because it's very different for our youth for our adult babies parents aren't the ultimate authorities about what happened in my childhood telling children that you can demand whatever you want because you made sacrifices for us will always backfire Having time with your grandchild is a privilege, not a right. Unless your therapist has met me, the diagnosis you have been given of me may be completely wrong. It's wrong to not empathize with my wish that you could have raised me differently. Threatening to cut me out of your will does not make me want to reconcile. Just because you did a better job raising me than your parents did raising you doesn't mean that you didn't hurt me. This is the view of your adult children and your guide to reconciling with them. Your guide to reconciling with them. That I cannot guarantee, ladies and gentlemen. But what I can do is offer you all of the knowledge that I have. Brene Brown. She talks about emotions. Brene Brown. dissects 71 different emotions in a book she wrote called Atlas of the Heart. Atlas of the Heart Stories gives us stewardship means <laughs> words to give names to the feelings that we have. The word that helped me describe to my therapist where I feel is called anguish. Anguish. It's the word out of the 71 words that Brene Brown went through and to me if you are estranged from your adult children and grandchildren I think the word anguish might also be a word you could describe once you describe how you feel in detail it starts the healing process chapter six whoops chapter six <laughs> Places we go when we're hurting. Anguish, hopelessness, despair, sadness, and grief. This is a tough chapter, but it's a chapter that to me may be the most important one. It's a chapter that gives words to some of the emotions and experiences that we have the most difficult time naming. And it's funny, since the book has come out, I've received so many emails and, you know, comments on social saying, I had no idea this is what anguish felt like. I didn't know what despair was. Being able to name it has allowed me to talk about it. So I want you to hold in your mind and heart as we go through this chapter that the ability to recognize, label, name is inextricably connected to the ability to move through and heal. We're going to start this chapter looking at anguish, which is maybe one of the toughest emotions in the book, if not the toughest. Renata Suzuki has this beautiful quote about anguish. Let me read it to you. Anguish. It's one of those words you understand the meaning of just by the way it sounds. 
It has this gnarling rasp to it as you twist your mouth around to say it. Kind of like what feeling it does to your insides. It's an awful, drawn out, knotted up word. It's also one of the things I feel without you. Poets, artists, and writers approach the topic of anguish without apology, often capturing it in a way that leaves us with a sense of shock, heartbreak, and sometimes foreboding. We may not be clear on what we're seeing or reading or hearing, but we are certain that we don't want to move in closer. We don't want to know or relive that emotion, that experience. Other countries have not made the shift. Almost every other industrialized country still provides either a free or subsidized preschool, lunches, even college, health insurance, job training, and pensions. Countries are helping the families. It's not just the parents' job, society. It's no small measure that our children are not quite so happy. Yes, it's society, not just parents. I don't deserve to be happy. What? I don't deserve to be happy? Why am I settling for less? Why am I settling for crumbs? Why am I begging at the table? There has to be a purpose for this pain. This pain, there has to be a purpose for this pain. This is about a breakthrough. I'm Janice Jensen. And I'm gonna talk to you about a breakthrough in estrangement and all of the different things that are going on in the United States and so many things that I want to share with you on estrangement that I have learned. There will be lots of references, a lot of quotes from other people, a lot of readings from other people that have much more experience in this than I do. But the number one thing I want to offer throughout this hour is how to deal, how to deal with being estranged from your adult children. That is what I offer. Knowledge, education, and support. The number one thing we need is support. Support from other parents. Not to talk ill of the children, but to teach each other, to just compassionately listen to each other. How to deal, how to support. I have a support group on Facebook. I'll put that in the comments below and chat where we share our knowledge, not our bashing, where we share our pain. When we just compassionately listen to each other and God willing someday to our adult children. Compassionate listening. What is compassionate listening? It's called no fracking. Can you imagine sitting with your girlfriend and they just intently listen to you? They don't compare their story. They don't give you suggestions on what you should do. They um, don't say, oh, I remember when that happened to me. Those are all things called fracking. When you only compassionately listen to someone, you are listening in your heart. So let's just breathe in real quick. Just a nice big inhale through your nose. Go ahead and close your eyes. Hold that breath in. Pull your shoulders back. Let's exhale. Kind of caught you off guard. I do this so much. It's so second nature for me. So we're going to go ahead and close our eyes because we're talking about a really difficult subject. So go ahead and close your eyes. And we're going to inhale through our nose. We're going to hold that. So go ahead and inhale through your nose. Hold that breath in and then give your focus to your chest area, to your heart center. And think about that child. Maybe even visualize them when they were two or three years old. And just feel the love. Feel the love. 
And go ahead and open your eyes and relax your breath. And then when you talk to your child, God willing, someday, maybe with support, counselors, you look at them with that child. That's all we are, is a little child with all kinds of scars and things. And I want to talk about breakthroughs, ways to break through that. So, compassionately listening. The biggest thing, radical acceptance. Throughout this, you'll hear radical acceptance. Radical acceptance. I would teach on radical forgiveness. Radical forgiveness. So much of the time, we project out our pain. We project our pain onto other people. We just put it out on other people. We don't know that we're doing that. We have no idea. But we project our pain onto other people. Projecting our repressed shame outward. Recognize when you're projecting. As soon as you find yourself judging someone and getting angry, you know you are projecting. Anger serves as a constant companion of protection. For you always use this emotion to justify the protection of your self-hatred. Let me say that all again. Recognize when you're projecting outward. As soon as you find yourself judging someone and getting angry, you know you are projecting. Anger serves, anger serves as the constant companion of projection. For you always use this emotion to justify the projection of your self-hatred. Yeah, you heard it, of your self-hatred. I'm sure you might have heard already today or in some days, hurt people hurt people. What we want to do is heal. We don't want to hurt anymore. We want to stop the madness, stop the hurting. One of the ways many people are doing this is by taking themselves out of the picture. And you'll hear more about that from other people throughout my hour talk. But when you change what you say, it changes. What you see, Maya Dalala from Spotify. When you change what you say, it changes what you see. When you speak, your words matter. Your words become matter. When you keep hate, anger ugh, involved in your life, you're exhausted. I know for a fact. I've taken a few months and then I was asked to talk about my breakthrough. And I'm still breaking through. <laughs> I'm still breaking through. But it's a daily process. That support group really, really helps me. And this education that I've been getting through Audible, through YouTube, through all of the different ones. Oh my gosh, yes. You need to value yourself. Give yourself some positive affirmations. Value yourself. My affirmation is I am a nurturing caring, loving, clean lady who is pure, innocent sunshine. And you can just say that all you want. Here are some tools you can use. Breathing, the big inhale. I could do it again. Go ahead and close your eyes. Big inhale. Hold that breath. Put your focus at your heart center. You're holding the breath in. You're rolling your shoulders back. That opens your heart up even more. And just putting that focus at your heart center and go ahead and exhale. You can feel a shift. When you start to feel that anger, the pain, the anguish, the everything, everything we all are feeling, <laughs> doesn't go away. It just subsides. Because there's no pain like this pain. You'll hear that from other people too. Not just me. <laughs> We've got to have some tools. We've got to have some support group. No matter what, no matter what happened, we are alive and we are humans and we need to be nurtured. Yeah, we need to have our own personal breakthrough no matter what else is going on in the world. So you need to breathe. Breath is the first thing that came into you and it's the last thing that's gonna leave before that soul lifts up and goes out. 
your breath. You need to learn to control your breath. Yeah, I said you need to. I don't say you have to, but it's just, I have a friend. I'll say, okay, breathe, and they'll go. And there, nothing shifts. Why? Because they're not giving any energy to it. You know, if you don't give any energy to going big inhale and hold it, focus on your heart center and exhale. And if you were just somebody in the video and you just watched that and didn't do it, you won't get anything out of it. It's just like anything. You can walk into the gym. You're not going to get in shape. You can walk into a church. You're not going to get saved. You can watch me breathe. You're not going to learn breath work. Anyway, another thing you got to do is open your mind. <laughs> open your mind. Expand your mind. Learn. Educate. Focus on your heart. We have this ego that runs. We don't need to talk all about that. But we know this ego. We know it helps us survive. But we have a heart. And our heart is where the pain really lies. And that heart, you need to get some heart health. Heart health. Another tool, EMDR. Oh my goodness, it's going to be in the comments below. A link to EMDR. EMDR. When I do EMDR by myself at home from this link, the process is simple, but you really have to like that breath. You have to get into it. And you have to look at your trigger or your trauma or your whatever, whatever your pinpoint is that has those cobwebs and those blocks. And then you do that little EMDR. That's just little eyes going back and forth and your ears hearing a little thing. Oh, the relief. The relief. If you're looking for relief without a pill, without a drug, without being spaced out, and you want relief, EMDR, link below. All right. Another thing... Unfortunately, in the study of estrangement, adult children that have estranged their parents, divorce. Divorce. United States, and I'm only talking the United States, this problem, this issue, this epidemic is only in the United States, and you'll learn why. But divorce in the United States, huge so you know, you've heard, you know, the couple separates, it's every other weekend, the children are separated, the parent pits one parent, one parent against the other, one's a good parent, one's a bad parent. Oh gosh, before we had our troubles, we had 11 beautiful years. Beautiful. Night and day different. And then that <laughs> happened. And you're juggling and rolling and having the little kids and doing all your stuff and everything when that incident happens. And you don't have time to do anything except keep the balls rolling, keep the balls rolling, <laughs> right? And then, you're now in your 60s. And there's still things that are not going quite right. And I found that that EMDR just really gets you to target on those old things that you have. And one of mine was divorce, divorce, divorce. Not my, I married my husband twice, but divorced him twice. See, right now I'm even downplaying it. You gotta watch yourself. You gotta really watch yourself. And then, oh, we don't wanna go into it. You got the idea. You have a lot higher probability of being estranged from a child because of a divorce. Education, education. So, holy cow. I'm gonna get a sip of coffee on this one. Dr. Coleman, I'm just gonna have you listen to chapter 12 of Dr. Coleman. I hope that process will work today when I put that all together. Because Dr. Coleman is a psychiatrist, psychologist that has spent 40 years not planning to go study estrangement and adult children in the United States. It just happened to him. And he started to learn. And he's done so much learning, so much studying. And he's worked with thousands for all kinds of reasons. <sighs> but I'll summarize it from what I understand from what he has said in his book, The Rules of Estrangement. Society has changed. The focus is definitely on the child and what the child needs, what the child wants. 
that is the focus of today. We have to get away from that. We need to nurture ourselves. <sighs> and I also have some free PDFs, some freebies for just even being here and listening to me. And that'll be in the comments below. But I have a free PDF on how to train your brain. And also a link to that group for the estranged parents. And also a link for a free painting class. Just a free moving and painting class. Ah. <sighs> This is the view of your adult children and your guide to reconciling with them. You don't have to like it or agree with it. You have to understand it. And that's because today, more than at any other time in our nation's history, children are setting the terms of family life in the United States. If it was once the child's job to earn the parents' love and respect, today it is the parents' job to earn the love and respect of their child and to keep earning these throughout adulthood. Estrangement and the pursuit of happiness. Your adult child has adopted a strategy of estrangement in the pursuit of a happy life. At a time when work and personal relationships are more and more fragile, when the traditional markers of a good adult life can be no longer counted on to be there, from a secure job to a secure marriage, it's neither surprising nor unreasonable that this generation of adults are focused on the one thing they can still control, the pursuit of their own growth and life satisfaction. For example, according to a recent report by economists at the Federal Reserve, millennials are less well off than members of earlier generations when they were young, with lower earnings, fewer assets, and less wealth. This is despite being the most educated generation to date. In 2018, happiness among even younger adults in America fell to a record low of only 25%, the lowest level recorded by the General Social Survey, a key barometric index of American social life. Only 22% of young men and 28% of young women reported being very happy in 2018. That was Josh Coleman. The book is called The Rules of Estrangement. Josh Coleman, The Rules of Estrangement. Who would have ever thought why adult children get their ties and cut them and maybe how we can get back together? Rules of Estrangement, Dr. Josh Coleman. Excellent read on Audible. As he was just sharing, 2018, such a tiny percentage of our youth are happy. Can you believe that? What is the difference going on in the United States compared to other countries? And what I have studied, what I have found is this emotional, when Brene Brown was talking about just the one word anguish, we live with feelings. Feelings run us, basically. Emotions. And then we relive emotions over and over and over. When we start to form patterns of these feelings and emotions it becomes ourselves and now we are god willing starting to go inward i call it the inward journey to learn about ourselves learn use a therapist a licensed professional counselor read listen to brene brown on these 71 different emotions listen to the audible on the rules of estrangement Knowledge, get your knowledge, education, support. Go to my website, find us on that Facebook group. We want good intentions for each other. We want to be able to heal. We want to be able to engage with each other and start to understand this and move and shift from a diff, dis, discomfort to a comfort zone where we can live a life that we just 
felt like, oh gosh, there's too much anxiety going on or phobia or grief or stress or anger or low self-esteem or depression. So many things, but it's beautiful, beautiful life. How to have this beautiful life. Lift the fog, the fear, obligations, and the guilt. Fog. Lift the fog. Fear obligations and guilt let it be gone ah through mindfulness this emdr working with me if you'd like emotional regulation interpersonal effectiveness that means talking to yourself effectively distress tolerance learning about your triggers what causes you Ah, you'll become more relaxed, less worried, problems seem smaller, trauma, thoughts just start to dissipate. When we start to become true to ourself, right now I think we're in a comfort zone, but we have to become truthful to ourself. What lies am I telling myself? What am I pretending to not know? What is the payoff for staying? the same staying stuck this is on your estrangement this is like studying yourself basically you're taking ownership your truth with yourself this is an inward journey tool what lies are you telling yourself what are you pretending not to know what is that payoff for staying stuck what are you afraid of if you tell the truth what is the right action that you're taking just today? Usually the ego will challenge the truth and the ego will resist. But once the truth, yes, the truth will set you free. On the truth, another area, Josh Coleman gives five mistakes that are made. Number one, it is not fair. What is going on is different than any other relationship. What we have is not fair. It is in the best interest of the child, what the child, the adult child needs. Number two mistake, it, so you're understanding it's not fair. It, it's if you want the relationship you're gonna have to be listening to the child it's not fair it's not like your normal back and forth relationship you need to listen to that adult child don't let them verbally abuse you but you need to listen and hear what's going on with them number two oh we do it guilt guilt oh did you call your mother and you get again guilt guilt cut out the guilt number three oh my oh gosh Returning fire with fire. No, we don't want fire with fire. No, doesn't work at all. Mad, matter of fact, number one way to kill it. Uh, number four, it's not going to be a quick reconciliation. It takes a lot of you, the parent, dropping into your heart, taking away the fairness, taking away the, I did this for you, I did that for you, and I, and I, and I did that. No, or arguing back and forth the fire with fire. It's going to take a lot of time to get to know this fabulous new adult. That's number four. It's not a quick reconcile. Number five, don't assume it was all because of you that these children want to be away from you. There's all kinds of reasons, all kinds of things going on in their lives. It's not just you. Don't personalize it. Go love yourself. You're awesome. You're don't feed the anger. Don't just all oh, and defend. Do that deep breathing. Breathe in and love yourself. Get some more knowledge, some education and support. Forgive yourself. Don't and and learn from it and move and move like physically really move. You guys are fantastic. If you've been listening this long, you are fantastic and you really care. A few more tips. Narratives. Watch the narratives. That means the stories that you're telling yourself. And spend some time with yourself with a spiral notebook and just journal those narratives and start to question and wonder where they came from. 
No guilt trips. Don't put yourself on a guilt trip. Don't put your children on a guilt trip. No guilt trips. Who wants a guilt trip? Learn how to communicate. Conscience, conscious communication, consciously communicating where you're listening for content, not listening to fight back. You're listening to lean in. And also parents, no large sum of money or emotional ties guarantees you a relationship. Nope. Another one that really helps to ex just really exclude you is to talk bad about the other spouse. It, it, nobody wants to have anyone talk bad about anybody. So watch what you're saying. Watch what you're saying and see, put a mirror to that. And maybe that just might reflect on you. I really appreciate your time. We're going to talk a little bit about EMDR, a little bit about boundaries, and you have a fantastic day. And please join our group. Find my website. Thank you so much. EMDR. You find your target areas. Post-traumatic stress syndrome. Post-traumatic stress syndrome. Something that oh, happened in your life. In this EMDR, in the link below, It'll walk you through anxiety. Do you have anxiety issues? I don't know. Take this little free test. Grief. Do you have grief issues? Take the little test. Is that your thing? Stress. You might just know that already, but take the little test. And sex. Do you have problems with that? Take the little test. Anger. Do you have problems with that? Self-esteem. Problems with that? Depression, problems with that. Any unwanted behavior, EMDR really works with. One area that would have helped me a lot before my split happened was boundaries. The boundaries, so let me explain to you about boundaries. That is something I didn't want to talk about. I didn't want to talk about boundaries. You are making me feel uncomfortable. Can you please stop? That's a boundary. You are making me feel uncomfortable. Can you please stop? That's a boundary. That is something I don't want you to know about me. That is a boundary. That is something I don't want you to know about me. That's a boundary. You're communicating. You're not just saying nothing. When you say nothing, that's not a boundary. When you say nothing, that's not a boundary. Got that one? Okay. So that is something I don't want you to know about me is a boundary. Saying nothing is not a boundary. I need you to respect what I said or I'll need to leave. That's a powerful boundary. I need you to respect what I say or I'll need to leave. That's a boundary. Not just get up and leave and be angry, but say clearly, I need you to respect what I said, or I'll need to leave or you'll need to leave. Say exactly what you mean. You might have even needed to think it out, write it down, pray about it. Say exactly, clearly from the heart what you mean. Don't let others change your mind. Let's not let others uh -oh, change our mind. Use I statements. Use I statements. I statements are I feel uncomfortable when you X. I feel uncomfortable when you Y. I. We have to train ourselves. A boundary is a rule you set for yourself. A boundary is a rule you set for yourself about how others treat you. See, I've let people treat me like a doormat. Yeah, and so to expect them to not wipe their feet on me when I have trained them to wipe their feet on me. A boundary is a rule you set for yourself about how others treat you, how they touch you, your personal space, how others talk to you, 
what others know about you, all of that, a boundary is a rule you set for yourself. Ah, yes, boundaries. When you are in a volatile relationship, whether it be a child, parent, anything, anyone, a friend, think about beforehand, write down some clear boundaries and then let the other person know your boundaries. Let the other person know your boundaries. They don't know your boundaries if you don't tell them. Not kind of, oh, maybe, whatever. Boundaries are good. Set clear boundaries. That was a lot, ladies and gentlemen. I have an hour to talk and to speak. I talked about estrangement. I used a lot of the rules of estrangement because you can hear, you cannot cover this in an hour. You can't cover this from me researching for six months. Dr. Coleman, Brene Brown, all the people I'll put, all the research, those people I wanted you to hear from. I wanted you to hear from them. I appreciate Angeline and this time and this breakthrough. What I want to do, number one, is to offer my Facebook group for estranged parents, not to bash. I don't want to hear any bashing. I want to hear us practicing a lot of tools. Some of the things Dr. Coleman said, it's not fair. It's bad word, bad word, not fair. It's just not fair. It's okay. Get over it. You got to radically forgive, radical acceptance. It's what we started with this motivate not through guilt not through guilt don't make them guilty and number three the one i am was famous for fire with fire that doesn't work that doesn't work at all mm -mm. don't fight fire with fire mm -mm. number four there is not a quick this is like a surgery that is so finite and the child adult child they've got the upper hand and you've got to know that ladies and gentlemen we want our children back, but not on our terms, on their terms. Wake up. You have to take them back on their terms, not our terms. Or you don't have to take them back. I want them back. I want my grands back. These are my grandbabies. And I carry them and take them everywhere, from the beach to the mountains to everywhere. And do some things for yourself while you don't have them. Could be the rest of your life. I'll tap travel around with it. Think positive. <laughs> Don't think negative. Number four, it's not about the parent. It's not about me. It's about the child and about their children. Yeah, I really appreciate your time and come to my group. We can practice all the tools. I put up earlier uh, energy, feeling, motions, mental agility. Just join the group and we'll just start to grow and help each other. No fracking, no fixing, no complaining. Dale Carnegie, do not do not condemn. God, it doesn't work. <laughs> do not condemn. These are such old tools that we know. We know these tools. Do not condemn. Do not criticize. Do not criticize anybody. And do not complain. Do not complain. I am not at all perfect. Elvis has left the building. <laughs> This is a wonderful, wonderful breakthrough. We got to start. Just reach out to me. I'm Janice Jensen. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. I really don't like to stay that much on social media anymore. I really much more like to work with people one-on-one. -on -one. It's really vulnerable. It's very, really not a fun thing to talk about. <laughs> but it's existing and we have to get it up and out in a very loving way from our heart. From the heart, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Janice Jensen. Find me on, hey, oh, duh, JaniceJensen.com. <laughs> Thank you.